Hey guys, it's Alex here from alextubi.com and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how to take a picture from this to this in Lightroom. Now I will preface this by saying I am by no means a pro editor, photographer, preset making queen or anything like that. I'm just a girl who likes her photos to look bomb as for Instagram. So if you can relate, this video is for you. If you can relate, you also would totally love my 10 Instagram secrets free training. Click the link above or in the description box below to sign up and learn the 10 things you need to be doing to see better results on Instagram. So typically when we see an incredible photo on Instagram, a part of it is good quality camera gear and composition, but in 2020, the bigger part of it is editing. With the right editing, you can really up-level your photos. So that's exactly what I'm gonna show you today using Lightroom on my desktop. So let's go ahead, jump onto the computer and I'll show you how I do it. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is you're going to have to open up Lightroom. So Lightroom is both a desktop app and a mobile app. Um, there are some differences between them. And today we're just focusing on the desktop version. So if you'd like to follow along, go ahead, click the link in my description box below to sign up for Lightroom. It is a paid app, um, but I do think it's well worth the investment. So. Once you're in Lightroom, it's gonna look a little something like this. Uh, if you haven't uploaded photos before, then you're probably not gonna see all these photos on the bottom here, okay? So first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go file, import photos and videos, and go ahead and import the photo that you wanna work with. So I've selected today that we're gonna work with this photo here, which I think looks pretty cool. It's a little bit dark and I just want to really bring it to life. Um, so this is a raw photo. So this is taken with a DSLR. So you're probably familiar with a JPEG photo and this is a raw photo. So they are different. Um, again, not a photographer, but raw photos do collect more data, I think it is, um, which allows you to actually pull out more colors and more shadows and and sort of have a better editing experience than if you're working with a JPEG, which is actually a compressed photo. So I highly encourage you to use RAW when possible. So again, this is a photo that I like. Um, I definitely think it's a little bit dark in the center here, obviously. You can't really see me, but the background is beautiful, so I definitely don't wanna lose any of that, and I just wanna amplify this photo. So we're gonna start on the right hand side here. This is basically how you control the future of your photo. So everything that you could possibly need is over here in this sidebar. So the first thing that I like to do is I like to come down to this section where the highlight shadows, whites and blacks are. Um, we will sort of touch on everything, but this is where I like to start. So in this case, there's a lot of shadows here. It's very dark. So if I go ahead and I pull up the shadows, well, look at that. <laughs> Literally with one click of a button, this photo is entirely different. So on your keyboard, you've got the backslash key underneath the delete key. And if you click that, it will toggle between the before and the after. Okay, so I've literally touched one thing and we already have an entirely different photo. So I've just pulled up the shadows a little bit and then I like to kind of go around and play with everything. So basically any of these tabs, you can click on them and drag them to the left or drag them to the right, okay? So what I encourage you to do is basically go to the extremes of both so that you can see exactly exactly how this particular tool affects your photo, okay? And if you decide, oh, I don't want it and I want it to go back to where it was, you can just double click the button and it'll take it back to zero, okay? So um, here I'm just gonna play around a little bit. So if you pull down the whites, if you pull up the whites, you're gonna fully overexpose your photo. So you obviously don't wanna do that, but maybe it's already overexposed. So then you might pull down the whites a little bit to sort of soften that, okay? So while we're on the topic of overexposure, if your photo is way too bright, it's really hard to edit it, okay? At that point, you've sort of blown out all the details and you can't really salvage any of it. But if your photo's dark, you can actually salvage it quite well, as you saw. So I actually personally try to shoot darker than brighter, knowing that in post, I can definitely bring up the brightness and I can, you know, take full control over my photo. If you take photos that are too bright to begin with, you're gonna struggle to sort of bring them back down to where you ultimately want them. So then we've got the blacks, which sort of either darkens the blacks in the photo or lightens them. So a lot of these are pretty self-explanatory, um, but blacks works very similar as contrast does, okay? But contrast is more of like a blanket wash, I find. So I actually typically like to use the blacks if I want to crisp things up or make it a little more contrasty. So I'm just gonna bring that down a little bit. And then 
you know, I've, I've sort of jumped over exposure and contrast here because I do think that they sort of come in afterwards. They become important after you've played with these. Um, so, and I typically will wait to do exposure until the end because based on all the other things that we're gonna do, the exposure is gonna change a little bit. However, I do usually notice that I need to bump the exposure a little bit, okay? So I'm just gonna, I'll just put it around 25 for now. Contrast I'm cool with. And then the temperature and tint up here, you're probably not going to need them because they kind of make your photo a little crazy. But hey, the whole idea with Lightroom is sort of figuring out what your style is and how you achieve that and then sticking with it. So, you know, this creates a nice, really warm photo that makes it feel like, you know, I'm in an entirely different place. So it's not a bad thing at all. Um, but, you know, typically I'm not gonna post a photo that's like this color, right? So totally up to you. So so again, I've just double clicked it to go back to what it originally started at. And then tint is again, kind of crazier colors. So um, play with that if you like, I typically just leave it out, okay? So at that point we've skipped past this, we've slightly adjusted exposure. I might come back to that later. And I've played around with the highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. Now the next section starts with texture. So again, highly recommend going all the way to the right and all the way to the left. So you can see this is sort of like a sharpening tool, okay? So I don't think going to the left looks very good um, and going super far to the right is almost a bit too sharp. So um, I don't really know if I need it at all. I'm just gonna keep it at zero. Clarity is similar but different. <laughs> so uh, you can go ahead and play around with that as well. I don't think I really need that. And then dehaze, I actually might need because as you can see in this photo, it was quite a hazy day. And this basically is going to cut down that haze. So I'm gonna go a little bit to the right to just bring some clarity back in here and some brightness, which then ultimately darkened this a little bit, but I'm not too worried about that at this time. I'm just gonna progress and we can always come back and tweak things. The next section is the vibrance and saturation. So this is where you're gonna really boost up the colors or you can get rid of them, okay? So again, if I go all the way to the right, we get a really, really blue sky. And if I go to the left, we're basically getting a black and white photo, okay? Same with the saturation. It's, it's sort of, um, vibrance and saturation are very similar, but they sort of tackle the colors a little bit different, okay? So um, I'm probably gonna bump up the colors a little bit here. You know, nothing too crazy. Again, we're gonna touch colors. We haven't even actually gotten to the colors point yet. So, um, so we'll start here and then again, we can make adjustments. So just in this first section, I've made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tiny little adjustments. And if I hit that backslash key, this is what we've done so far, okay? And when you look at the original, now it seems so much darker and so much shittier than it actually was when we first looked at it because your eyes are now adjusted to this new brighter version okay so i'm going to go ahead and skip past the tone curves right now this is like another form of exposure it helps you play with the lighting which i personally like to wait till the end to do so the next part is my favorite part and it lets you adjust each individual color, okay? So this is where you can get really creative and really find your own style. So we'll first start with red. And what I like to do is I like to go to the middle one, the saturation, and grab that little button and drag it all the way to the left or all the way to the right. So in this case, there's not a whole lot happening because there's not actually that many reds here, okay? So let's jump to the next one, let's go to orange. If I go all the way to the left, you can see that basically all my skin is in the orange tone, so if I, desaturate it, you know, now I, now I don't exist anymore. So again, this is a unique style of photo that some people might like. And if I go all the way to the right, it's obviously a bit too harsh. Okay. But what I'm doing here is trying to first determine, is there any oranges in this photo? So we've determined, yes, there are some oranges and then you can adjust them. So the first one is the hue. So this is gonna change like the type of orange. Is it gonna be a more reddy orange or is it gonna be a more yellowy orange, okay? So if I go this way, you know, now I look like I got a really bad sunburn. If I go this way, I look like I'm a bit seasick. So orange is actually quite a unique color. Um, it's not one that's super flattering. Like I definitely have it in my skin tone, but if I go either direction, it kind of gets weird. So I'm not really gonna change the hue. And then the last one is the luminance, okay? So this is how dark or how light the orange is, okay? So I can go darker if I wanted to change my skin tone or I can go lighter if I want it to appear maybe a little less orangey. So in this case, I'm gonna go a little bit uh, to the right on the luminance and maybe desaturate it just a little bit, 
okay? Then I'm gonna go on to yellow. I'm gonna drag it all the way to the left and all the way to the right, and I can see that I'm affecting the grass here. So I actually kind of like the idea of desaturating this because then it, it kind of takes the focus away from the grass and leaves it more on me and the mountain. So I'm gonna just pull that out a little bit, see if I wanna change the tone. I don't really want it to be like a red yellow and I don't really want it to be a green yellow. So I'm just gonna double click that to keep it in the center. And then what about the lightness or darkness? So that I'm gonna kind of just keep as is as well. Now we're gonna move on to the green and the same thing, I'm just gonna progress through there. I'm not gonna worry too much about green. Then we've got aqua. Um, there's not a whole lot happening here, but you can see a little bit of a change in this area and also in the pavement, okay? So um, if I go all the way to the left, the pavement becomes a bit more gray and a bit more clear. So I'm actually just gonna fully desaturate that and leave it there. And then we've got blue. Now I know this is definitely going to make a big effect because there's lots of blue in this photo. So if I go all the way to the left, there goes all of the blue. And you know, keeping it desaturated is kind of cool. It brings back in that haziness that it actually looked like when I was there that day, um, but it's not as vibrant or as exciting. And if I go all the way to the right, it makes it a little bit unrealistic. So you gotta have to find a nice middle ground. So I definitely wanna bump up the blues a little bit. And then in terms of luminosity, um, I like it to be a little bit brighter, keep that haziness. And then what I really like about the blues is the hue selection. So it could be a more turquoisey, greeny blue, which is very reminiscent of some Instagram presets that you've probably seen. This teal color with like a warm undertone is really popular. Um, but what I actually like is going the other way and kind of going into a more purpley blue, okay? So I'm only gonna do it just like a smidge. So like here's, normal and then I'm just gonna go that way just a tiny bit to give it this like purpley like almost sunrise or sunset tone okay and then we've got purple and magenta which are often quite similar and in this case it's not really affecting a whole lot so I'm just gonna get rid of that and this last one I can't see it at all usually whenever I notice purple and magenta it's usually like in my lips or something like that so in this photo you can't really see that so I'll just leave that so the fun thing about Lightroom is of course the before and after feature. So if I go ahead and click that backslash button again, you can see how far we've come, but you can also turn on and off each individual section that you're editing, okay? So I can go ahead and turn off all of these colors and see how all of those changes affected the photo. So this is where we were before we got to the color section, and then this is where we are afterwards. So it's not a huge difference, but there's definitely a difference, okay? So then the next section is called split toning, and this is where most presets are born, okay? This is how you come up with a really unique color scheme that affects both the highlights and the lowlights or the shadows of your photo. So I'll show you what I mean. So you first have the highlights, and if you click this gray box here, it's gonna open up this color wheel. And if I click and drag over it, it's basically, adding the color that I'm on top of, okay? So right now we're affecting the highlights, which means like the brighter parts of the photo. So I could put, you know, this pinky tone on it. I can make it more yellow, more blue, more purple. And oftentimes when I use this, I'm going to use like a very low version of it. So it's just like a slight tinge of the color. But this is typically where you'll come up with a unique sort of color combination. So let me just go over this. What do I like? So again, I'm kind of drawn to these like purpley blues. So I'm gonna come down and leave it around this like 15% mark as you can see here. So that's just like how um, saturated the color is. And then I'm gonna hit the X and then the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna add the shadows into it, okay? So we've already affected the highlights and now we can add color to the shadows, okay? So I've got a kind of pinky, highlight and now if I added like a red or an orangey shadow, I've now created this really unique color combination. Okay, so you can just drag across and it's really just up to you. There's no right or wrong here. It's just what style do you like? So for me, I do kind of like that warmer tone. So I'm gonna go right around there and close that out. So now if I toggle this split toning section on and off, we can see what that did. Okay, so again, minor change, but it all kind of comes together at the end into a complete edited, awesome photo. So 
that's the tiny difference there. And what I can do here is I can also adjust the balance between the highlight color and the shadow color. Okay, so if I wanna go, if I go all the way to the left, I'm gonna lose a lot of that um, pinky highlight that I picked and I get this more orangey tone. Or if I go the other way, I'll lose the orangey tone. So let's keep it somewhere in the middle there. And then next we've just got some basic uh, sharpening and things like that. So go ahead and play with that if you want to add sharpening to your photos. And this is basically the last section that I like to play with. And this adds a vignette around the outside of your photo. So if I go to the darkest point of this, you're gonna see how that works. So it's just like a dark little circle around the edges. And this style has been around for like ever. Um, and I don't know, for me, it just kind of like brings focus to the center of the photo and I kind of like it. So you can adjust how much you have and you can obviously go the opposite way, which is a unique look in itself, but I'm gonna go this way. I'm gonna add a little bit of darkness. And then again, if I just toggle it on and off, I can see how it affects the photo, okay? So it kind of makes it darker, but in my particular opinion, I like it. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and hit that before and after button and like, look how far we've come. Look how not usable of a photo it looks like the original was, which again, when we first looked at it, it looked kind of cool. We knew it was a little dark, but now it just looks so blah compared to this. So there you have it. That is my method for editing photos in Lightroom. As I mentioned, this software is incredibly powerful and you can get super creative with your edits and take them a lot further than I have. But today I just wanted to show you the basics that you must know and that have really helped me up level my photos. So if you like this video or learn something new, please give it a like, subscribe and tap that notification bell to make sure you never miss another video from me. That's it for today, guys. I will see you next time.